All right, we're kicking off Why I Want again, this time with the complete opposite of the previous episode's prospect profile that we had. Two days ago, it was Logan Stankoven, a small guy with a bite. Today, we're taking a look at a player who is not small at all, and who kind of has a little bit of a bite. He's a really weird overall profile here, which is why this video is honestly one of the most difficult ones that I have tried to prepare for in this series so far. Today we're going over 2021 NHL eligible prospect Simon Edvinson. And just a quick disclaimer, yeah, he's Swedish. It's Simon, not Simon. Thank you to those in the Stankoven video who commented Ghost Rider. If you want a chance to be featured in the next one, then stick around to the end for the comment section keyword. But either way, Simon Edvinson is the guy that we're talking about here today. Unlike Logan Stankoven of the previous episode, he is not small at all. Simon Edvinson is a six foot five, 207 pound left handed defenseman playing for the Frolunda Hockey Club in the Junior 20 National. Also spending some time in the SHL with Ferlunda, as well as Vastaras IK in the Allsvenskan. Now he's only 18 years old, but he's already six foot five, 207, bro. That already in itself is an NHL quality frame. It's honestly kind of funny because he's still so young. He does have an opportunity as he gets older to maybe fill out a little bit more, maybe gain a little bit more muscle. Six five, 207 certainly isn't bad, but hey, what about six five, 215, six five, 217, 220 with a bulked up frame. This guy can go out there and absolutely put himself in a position where he could be a very, very desirable NHL body. But in the sample he has had this season, he has played in a pretty interesting role. With the J20 national team, 6 points, 14 games played in the SHL, 1 point in 10 games. Not really the biggest deal in the world, by the way. SHL is top of the line, Swedish hockey. And as a teenager, it's certainly difficult to score any points, let alone actually crack in general. Then you have yourselves his Allsvenskan performance, 5 points in 14 games played, with 3 in 6 in the qualifiers for the actual SHL. He also spent some time with the U18 team this year for Team Sweden, and he actually did pretty well, 4.7 games played. And a lot of people were really impressed with the overall skill set and the damage he was able to put out there on the ice. And yeah, I said damage. Simon Edvinson, even though he is a defenseman, is a player who showcases some brilliant flashes of offensive manipulation and on-puck creativity to open up lanes and rush pucks to the net. When he's playing his game, those net rushes are usually filled with dangles. He's got really good wheels. He's a really dynamic skater, laterally, and when he gets going, despite the fact that he's six foot five. In fact, it's so crazy that when you look at this guy's highlights, you see the best of his game. It's incredible what this guy, a big, dangly sort of kind of guy, can do. But the thing is, that isn't consistent. That's pretty much what he does at his best. And the best of Simon Edvinson is by far not what you see on a day-to-day -day basis. Fundamentally, he's got a lot of skill. His hands are great. His wheels are great. As we noted, when he's passing the puck to the best of his ability, he's doing it in a manipulative way. And he's dangling around guys that come in, lured into what they think he's going to do, but it just creates a new open lane for another guy on the side where Edvinson sends it over and eventually, boom, tic-tac-toe, what's in the back of the net. But when it comes to that passing, it's the huge variety of inconsistencies that pushes Simon Edvinson down draft boards accidentally. Because this is the kind of guy that when you watch the tape, you watch all the good things he does, it's like, wow, he's amazing. But then when you watch the extended tape, you watch the footage of him when he's not going out there scoring a point or getting an assist or dangling a guy's pants off. He's the kind of player who will sometimes just take the puck in his own end and just kind of throw it forward into the neutral zone for nobody. He's the kind of guy that sometimes panics under pressure in his own end, tries to send the pass along the boards, only for it to get picked off because he didn't really look at where he was passing it to. He's the kind of guy that doesn't really make the best passes all the time, especially when he has the puck, and as noted by Will in his scouting report for Simone Edvinson, this is a guy who in some games will pass the puck a ton, but just not get the puck on target a good chunk of the time. And for a defender who is supposed to be brought into this new NHL, which has speed and creativity as a marketable part of the game, Simon Edvinson, while at his best, can really do well under this kind of model, doesn't do his best a lot of the time. 
Now, that's pretty much what I have to say about him when he is on the puck. Sometimes he gets some really weird, really inconsistent passing decisions. Other times he gets some really good, skilled, borderline elite flashes of talent. But when he's off the puck, he's honestly a lot more consistent in my own viewing here. I said this in the scouting report, or not even scouting report, but just the mock draft we did earlier on this channel. Simone Edvinson is a guy who plays his best when the puck is honestly off of his stick. And you're like, okay, whoa, that's weird. What do you mean he plays his best when he doesn't have the puck? You just said that he has some really good flashes and brilliance in the offensive zone to create offense, which was especially shown off at the U18s and in the Osvenskan and the playoffs. What gives, Lego? He's got a really good defensive transitional game. When opposing players are coming in on the rush, Simone Edvinson is really, really just abnormally good at swaying from side to side, analyzing the situation and using gap control to gauge the situations effectively, either to get a stick on the puck and swat it away, or just use his big frame to step in front of the guy who's coming in with the puck, pin him to the boards, and swat the puck away then. He's got a really good shutdown defensive game when coming back. And even in the boards, he's not afraid to get in there and start digging and shoving guys away. He uses that six foot five frame pretty well when it comes to his own end. Now, sometimes he'll toss the puck out to nobody or send a weird pass that just gets intercepted and leads to an odd man chance, but. The defensive side of his game is really well polished, which is why there's so much to say about Simon Edvinson, because offensively, he can be extraordinarily good. When he doesn't have the puck, he is also extraordinarily good as just a regular defender in his own zone. Sometimes you get highlights where, on the penalty kill, he'll steal the puck as it's going cross-crease, he'll come down, do a little bit of a dangle, go in on a breakaway, and score off a fancy move. It happens sometimes. But it's just the inconsistent decision-making that he has when he has the puck in the defensive zone, in the neutral zone, when he's trying to facilitate play, and this guy passes it a lot, and he ends up giving it up because, what the heck, where were you even trying to pass it to? His overall hockey IQ is questionable at best, and his overall consistency is inconsistent at best. But at the end of the day, this is a guy who has a big, extremely mobile defender who has some extremely good offensive capabilities once in a while. It's why some are extraordinarily high on him in the draft rankings. The consolidated ranking for Simon Edvinson is sixth overall when you take a look at all the scouting outlets combined. But... Future Considerations has him at second. TSN and Bob McKenzie have him at second as well. You have Sportsnet, which also features the likes of Scouts and their opinions, having him at four. You have McKean's, who have him at five. But then you have the ones that are a little bit lower. EP themselves has him at nine. You also have Recruit Scouting at nine, and Dauber has him at seven. Draft Prospects Hockey has him at 11th. So this is a guy who's overall upside, if you want to say the ceiling that exists within this player, if you can go out there and iron out the on-the-puck passing situation details within his game, iron in the principles of saying, okay, you need to go out there and you need to, I don't know, put your head up. You need to be aware by doing this, by surveying the ice. Once you identify where it is you need to pass the puck, okay, then you analyze what exactly it is you need to do to get that pass through. Either you dangle by a guy or you change your positioning or you do this, you do that. You need to rewrite some of the wiring that is in there that causes this guy to thwart away a very good chunk of the passing attempts that he makes per game. Because at the end of the day, you're a defenseman. You're going to be retrieving the puck a lot in your own end, and you're going to be stealing it away as the opponents come in on defensive rushes, which Edvinson is very well capable of defending against. Which is why he is extraordinarily strange. At the end of the day, you're either going to get yourselves a guy who can capitalize on all the good in his game and tune out all the bad to become an incredibly good Victor Hedman-like comparable prospect. Here are some of the scouting reports on MyNHLDraft.com. Sam Constantino says it right here. Aside from the obvious nationality connection, he will not escape the Victor Hedman comparisons, and those are legitimately based on where Hedman was at this time in 2009. It's kind of why I'm having a really difficult time coming up with a title for this why I want. Scouching said it was the wildest wild card, and I like the alliteration and the repetition with the superlative for wild, as well as the wild card, so the wild prefix over there. But 
When it comes to Edvinson, there's just so much to say. There's a lot that you can work on, but there's so much that's already there that you just kind of need to bring out a little bit more in order to get the player that many believe could become a second overall caliber player in this draft. He could be the best player in this entry draft, but a lot needs to go right. So talk to me in the comments what you thought about Simone Edvinson in this scouting report over here. I personally see him maybe probably being at best a top four-ish kind of guy who can play a good penalty killing kind of role, maybe chip in on a second power play unit. But if everything goes right, he could be a number one defenseman. He could be. It's just you don't know. So if you made it to the end, comment in the comment section below, Carnage, because that's kind of the way this guy plays. And sticking with the Marvel stuff, I mean, it makes sense, right? Carnage. Talk to me in the comments what you think of you enjoyed this Vrishash Rolls of the 99. And bye.